but before we do that and go on to game number two let's show off one more card from the new league kits we have insidious prisoner foil slips that will be sent out Ooh. Uh, just one of the seven foils that will be available in the league kits and we'll continue to reveal those uh, throughout our matchups here before we move on to this game uh, we're gonna take a quick break I'm gonna grab a beverage All right, so we are back. And again, thank you very much for tuning in. So that last game puts Team USA on the board, picking up their first match win. Uh, that would put them uh, down 2-1 currently. And this will be our fourth match here, uh, Silver Glen and Rebel Spy. Two teammates uh, taking on each other. Their first game ended... Uh, abruptly, due to a gem server crash, they were both on about turn 4 or 5, I think it was, and they had mid-20s and life card totals left, so they had to start over and replay the game, and this is that replay. So we've got Diplo against Map. And then our second game here will be Old Allies versus Map. So both guys pick a map. All right, so we're watching this game from Silver Glen's point of view. He went with the alert my star destroyer start, and we see he already has the Chimera. So he's got Chimera and Thrawn to match for first an additional ship. Uh, it does come in handy in this Diplo matchup. Presumably your finalizer ends up at Jakku, and then the Tandem works its way over here. Uh, and then having another ship combo that can go deal with that and force it to move back uh, can certainly be very helpful. Otherwise you're left with just the shuttle, and that's not doing a whole lot by itself. So Silver Glenn's going to drop. <clears throat> He's 
he's got the Gick in hand, so he drops the trooper, he pulls Jakku, he pulls his other locations, and he moves FN out by himself. We see he's got the Gick and the Lana Dobreed. But that's a, certainly a bold first play. His opponent's only getting 10. We know if he wants to spend, and this is again, this is the R2, um, if he wants to spend a 6 or 7 force trying to you know get doing anything to move around or get that set up, uh, he may not have the characters or the resources to go after this guy right away. Obviously, he can draw a few cards. He can bluff barriers and things like that. I mean, there's always the risk of the counter beat, so not uh, not a completely uh, crazy play, but certainly one we don't see people do often and may not recommend people do often. And it looks like he'll draw a handful of cards here. He picks up a command, which he could use to get Hux or PV. He picks up a Kylo, who will be pretty important as well. Getting Now he's got Kylo and Phasma to get used pile searches. We're just going to see Joe deploy a bunch of locations here. Alderaan, Cantina from hand, large moisture farm with his once per game pull. There's Mothma. Mothma gets Chandrilla. And Joe just adds a whole bunch of activation on his own. Drops Kraken as a pilot. Drops the Bright Hope at Chandrilla. So he'll move the Tandem over. He'll ship dock, move the droids to the Bright Hope. Bright Hope will then go to Alderaan and deliver the plans. And... Uh, Joe will have his choice of any of the 27 cards in his reserve deck. Whether he wants to get a defensive card like a barrier or ships, guys. It's kind of going to depend on what the rest of his hand looks like. And he will pull battle plan. So a uh, calculated risk on the FN play and he does not get punished for it in any way. Now he's going to go with the alert my Star Destroyer approach. We do see that Hux is in there. And he is going to spend the 12 force. And he is going to drop Hux, who's going to get barriered. Uh, so he's, it's only deploys minus 4 to episode 7 systems. So uh, you guys get the minus 1 to each from uh, alert my star destroyer. So Hux still basically deploys free and the ship deploys minus one. Used pile search gets him PV, but with the ship being barriered, not a lot gonna go on here. So he'll drop PV for two. That'll boost its power, boost its immunity. And then if we see Kylo or Phasma, go back up this trooper. No, he's just gonna bank on the Gick. He'll get a used pile search. Takes a second copy of Kylo. Okay. He had a number of guys to choose from. He'll get the lightsaber that he knows is in there. So just going to try and push the pressure in terms of the damage. And he's going to overwhelmed at the system. Overwhelmed. That's such a nasty card. Let's take a look at it. During your deploy phase, target a system where your total power is more than double opponent's total power, and they have no Jedi or starship weapons. Place all opponent starships there and cards on them in owner's used pile. So the Tantiv, Mothma, and Kraken all go to the used pile. Total power there was 16 to 7, so he's got more than double. Yeah, overwhelms a nasty card. The objective flips, or is flipped now, and he gets to stack the overwhelmed to set it up to possibly play it again later. And Joe's going to pull 
the escape pod. Uh, use the escape pod combo and pull Hujix. So he grabs Moss Icely. He's going to send Kraken down, because Kraken draws by himself, basically. Leia's going over there. She's going to get a used pile pull. Looks like he's possibly going to try and flip here. Ooh. So we see Kraken do a number of things. Uh, you can't add Destiny draws to power or attrition. Ability here is provided by scouts or spies. He adds a Destiny. So essentially he draws by himself because he's a scout. And then during your turn, peek at top card of an opponent's force pile. So he does get you just a little extra information. He'll initiate the battle. He'll get a Destiny. It's not a zero, so FN will die. The Bright Hope could move back to Jakku, and he could shuttle Kraken up. That would then flip his objective, because Rebels would control a site and a system. And that is what he does. And now he's got four ability in space, so he also gets a destiny draw there. So now he's adding two to his total battle destiny. Both characters get a destiny draw. And he's just going to draw a handful of cards here. reading the chat there. So if we're going to mention something about karma, I don't, we'll, we'll see if uh, how that plays out as this matchup continues. So Justin will get the drain. He'll drain for two and three in the cantina. Uh, we see a solo and a Luke last Jedi go off the top. There goes a barrier. The R2 combo Wasn't that a drain of three? Did he not use the lightsaber? He did not use the lightsaber. Oh, Menace Fades is in effect. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. I was going to say, why didn't he use the... Yeah, never mind. It's, uh, yeah. All right, so we got a Chimera and Thrawn. There we said the second ship sometimes has to, you need something to help chase down when the finalizer can't. And he's going to play the Overwhelmed for the second time. It's going to get sensed by Leia. Can, sh can he draw low enough to pull it off? You, you got to try it, I guess. Wow! And he draws the two and, and successful. That's a pretty... Fairly, I'd say it's fairly lucky, but with the number of characters and things and ships that Diplo runs, there's a lot of ones and twos in the deck. So we'll just have to do it the old-fashioned way. Initiate battle, play a command, add a third battle destiny. You're already up by eight, which is what the two characters aboard forfeit for. So now you're just trying to end your ship's immune to less than six. And like we just said, Diplo draws a lot of twos and threes. So big battle here for Dark Side. Certainly going to rank up a lot of power. Worst case scenario is Thrawn would possibly die. I can't imagine there's any sixes in this light side deck. A couple of fives would become sevens, which would be enough to get Thrawn. Oh, there's a four, which becomes a six, which does just crack the immunity. So Thrawn will have to die. He's going to have 13 battle damage, which will pretty much clear everything exactly. And that'll flip the Diplo objective back. And 
we'll see if the finalizer or oh the chimera is going to move to Chandrilla. oh he's going to move it to Tatooine interesting I would have thought he would have moved it to Chandrilla because then he gets the four strain bonus because if you control with two star destroyers four strain plus one here obviously there's a possibility that your opponent uh, could just uh, drop another chip to get Menace Fades back and that would negate that but um, he could just move both ships to Tatooine as well to help block against any type of uh, celebration uh, or just kind of leave the Chimera hanging out by itself it's, it's immune to less than 4 it's power 8, forfeits for 10 worst case scenario it just dies Oh, there's young Skywalker so he didn't uh, reveal an agent so we're going to go for the Kylo beatdown instead. We've got Young Skywalker, Use Pile Pull, Cassian, who will cancel a Destiny. There's Chewy Protector, who deploys cheaper, because he's deploying to the same site as Leia for only two. He gets a Use Pile Pull. And I think we're going to see Darkseid have to play that Gick here. There's the Tanev that went used. So the Tanev's just going to go right to Starkiller base now that he knows, I guess, both ships are otherwise committed. Kylo's going to get a swing. This is going to hit. He's going to pay the force. Because he drew Mataka. And they'll both have to lose a force because of Kylo's saber. Loses the shuttle interrupt. And Mom Mothma goes used. He draws Hera for Battle Destiny, just a three. And Kylo draws a one, which will then get cancelled, so only Cassian is lost puts Kraken out of play in order to do that. So Kylo's going to have to burn the Gek after he loses two ec extra force because he lost the battle. He loses a barrier and a Mara Jade. Cassian dies. Kylo dies. Gek is played. to absorb all that extra battle damage. Uh, thanks, Andy, for sharing the link to that. Uh, down, welcome back to uh, the game. Welcome back to the videos. Of course, uh, there's lots of stuff on the, on the website, and uh, we've got lots of different videos uh, on Jump where we go through different games and different scenarios and things like that. Uh, if you're trying to remember the basic mechanics of the game, um, you know, you can try and follow along and just pick things up as you go. Uh, read through the old rule books. I don't think we have an actual. There may be basic tutorial videos uh, on the, the link to those on the Jemp website, which is how you can play online for free these days through this Jemp platform. Lightside will get the drains. Uh, they'll get around battle order here. They get drains with the Tanev and in the Cantina. Uh, Darkseid will pay to drain themselves first. Uh, they're going to drain at Chandrilla, and it's going to cause Projection and Savrip to go away. And then he is going to pay and drain over here as well. And that'll get rid of a Might and a Vanden Willard. It's going to leave him with a number of Force left, but these guys are all going to come down pretty cheap. So there's a First Order Trooper for free. See if he pulls the Yavin Sentry Shield. He does not. There's the second trooper for free. He's going to just empty his hand here. Here's an FN for free. Or for one, rather. Chewie will then go ahead and cancel his game text, which will allow Phasma, when she comes down, to add the battle destiny. 
and get a used pile search. No blasters or anything in this version, but he does find a trooper assault. It's going to add quite a bit of power and make all those guys immune to attrition except Kylo. But with the objective flipped back, he's not adding anymore. So he's going to add 8 more power, putting him up to 23. And Leia doesn't get to add a destiny because she's only when she's with an Imperial leader that she does that, and there are no Imperials there. Phasma adds a battle destiny even with other troopers, so he's got 23 and 2 destiny to 15 and 1. So he's up by 8. He's getting a second battle destiny, so it looks like he's going to return the favor with the Kylo damage. But his hand is pretty depleted at this point. He's down to just one card and not much left to draw. While Joe's sitting on a 10 card hand over there. He gets a total of 7. It's probably to me he's just going to lose Luke. And he's down by 10 total. I think Luke covers 9, right? Yeah. So he'll lose 2 force for Kylo, and then basically Luke and a card should cover the difference. Phasma also wins a battle, so she gets to retrieve a trooper, so she'll get that other FN back. It's one fewer card he can draw, though. Oh, actually, no. Aim high is not out. So he just gets a free trooper. So that's two free troopers uh, he got there. No Yavin Sentry Shield, forcing him to pay for the second guy, and uh, retrieval there. Silver Glen had five attrition to take in that battle, so even though the troopers were immune, Kylo was not. Kylo's only immune to less than four, so he opts to forfeit the two First Order troopers for six it's in order to keep Kylo. And he debates on moving and opts not to do it and just sort of leave everybody right where they are and draw a card. Save that force for FN, should he need to use it for his game text. Uh, Joe opts instead to lose Leia and Chewie to cover the extra damage. I would have thought he would have gone the other way with that one, but... Uh, oh, young Skywalker is the, uh, the resistance agent, so he doesn't want him to flip back, maybe. So he's going to lose the other two guys to keep to protect Luke. He does get a drain of two in at Star Killer base. Command and trooper assault go. And we got a Kanan Jarrus on the ground. If you can put a pilot. Oh, Lando's gonna go over there and get a used pile pull. If you can put a pilot on the Tantive, he can flip back. And then Luke can just run away. Actually, kind of curious. He didn't use the Cantina text. Or Moss Eisley. I would have thought he would have possibly done that. Could have moved out, drained for an additional one. But it looks like maybe his strategy is just soak up some damage. I mean, you're blocking two. You're blocking a drain of two, but when you lose the battle, Kylo's going to make you lose two. So it's not really saving anything by keeping Luke there in front of them, especially Luke's not immune to attrition because of the map objective. So I would have expected young Skywalker to bounce out here. Moss Eisley was already on the table, so he could have uh, added one more damage there. It looks like Joe's just going to spread the board as wide as he possibly can. He gets Owen and Baru deployed for free. He knows Silverglund's got three cards in hand. You know, at best he's got one character. Yeah, I don't like this loot play. Unless, I'm sure he's got, like, an It's a Trap or something like that to cancel the battle. And that's what he's just trying to do. Is He's just going to, or dodge. I mean, dodge would be bad, because obviously he would... Pull the, he's going to pull the firepower shield, so he'd still lose two. So the only thing that makes sense here, and with the three force he saved, is it's a trap. And he's just trying to uh, spread out as much as he can, do as much damage as he can. He's going to put 
Grievous on the Chimera. Looks like he might try and do a little squeeze play here with the ships. After he battles and clears Luke out first. Yep, there's the It's a Trap. That will cancel the battle. Finalizer moves to Starkiller base. Chimera moves to Chandrilla. Nope, he's not even going to move the Finalizer. Or the uh, Chimera. I mean, it doesn't really make too much sense because Tanif can go to the other system. With these two systems at Parsec 4, it can reach either one. You don't necessarily have to move off Tatooine, and obviously you don't want your opponent setting up Celebration and retrieving cards, so... Makes sense leaving them there. And Silverland will take this opportunity to reload his hand quite a bit. Picks up a lateral damage. Picks up a command, Snoke. But he's going to get drained for quite a bit here. This is a drain of two. This is a drain of two. One and one. So he's going to lose six cards here. And no strategic reserves out to cancel any of these drains. Well, he still can before strategic reserves. Uh, no longer exists as it's being blanked in the errata that was just released, which should go into effect on Jemp on Monday. Possibly Sunday evening, depending on schedules and availability. And depending on these final Outrider Cup matchups. Young Skywalker retrieves a force. He gets the It's a Trap back. Ray draws the bottom card. Now Luke moves away and does the drain. Okay, so he just really was saving that for one more turn to block stuff the previous turn because he had the It's a Trap. Since these guys are teammates, they have probably have done a lot of deck building together, so certainly they could have guessed on certain card choices and whether or not there'd be some of It's a Trap Canceler or anything that the opponent might be playing. And there's Chirrut. All right, so this just got interesting. So he drops Wedge and Bale. Bale adds a Destiny while aboard a Corvette. And, of course, Wedge adds a Destiny on his own. Uh, then he drops Chirrut, who once per game lets you recirculate. So he spends all the Force because it didn't look like he had any, and then drops him and recirculates. And now he's got 11 cards in his reserve deck. Uh, if he would want to, he could initiate battles and things at this point. Not really any good spots, though. Um, you know, you get two Destiny here, but this ship is immune to less than eight because of PV. And you are not flipped, so you're not adding anything to your total. So I think instead we'll still see uh, the Tantive move away. Not to necessarily need to use the once per game then, because uh, it's not a when deployed thing. It's just once per game that you can do that. So not sure why he spent it here. Maybe we'll see in a minute here. Oh, a gravity shadow. That's why he recirculated, because he needed a destiny to draw for sense for what he was assuming was a gravity shadow. And he will be successful. There is no try is out, so the sense will be lost along with two force. Joe will lose the escape pod and a Jin Urso. Gravity Shadow will be lost, and the Tantive will get to move away. That'll then flip the objective back, and let him start adding to his destiny total. Right now, he's just adding one, two, three to his total. And Silver Glen does get a retrieval off of Firepower because he deployed guys and did not battle. Menace Fades is back in effect, canceling four strain bonuses. Don't really... S oh, this is a four strain bonus, so you can't drain here, so it'll be two and two.
two, three, four in the reserve deck. Snoke and P59 both available. He's going to deploy Snoke, get a card from used. He's going to take strategic reserves to cancel a drain. His opponent's going to pull aim high. And P59 over there to the desert, or the uh, Dune Sea. Requires six ability for you to draw destiny there. P59 gets around that because he draws one if unable to otherwise. A little curious, though, that based on these two sites, they're both drains of two, that Snoke would go here after Kanan because... Oh, I take that back. Uh, it's only with Imperials that he cancels immunity. I'm like, Kanan cancels immunity to attrition. Uh, but if you read the card more carefully, you'll see it's only while he's present with an Imperial or two other Rebels. So Snoke will retain his immunity to attrition, which in this case is less than eight. So never mind, this makes a whole lot more sense. So now we can get a couple of battles in here. P-59 taking a shot at Lando. He's got a 66% chance to hit him because we saw the 2-3-4. He draws the three, which is the ideal card to draw in this situation. Lando will be hit, and he will have to lose two force. He has secret plans out, so even if his opponent and Joe's down to just the bottom of his deck here, uh, just trying to squeeze out any last little bits of damage he can. He does not get a destiny draw, so there's the two. Lando's not forfeit zero, though, so he'll just go away peacefully. Six to four. Peel Lando. He can battle here with Snoke. He would cause one more force loss. And we know he's going to draw the four for destiny. His opponent loses the Hujix from hand. By killing off Lando, he's only adding two to his total. Worst case scenario, they both die. Kanan's not immune to anything, so... He draws a three, which will become a five, so it'll be nine to seven. So, options here for Silver Glen. Kind of puts him in the same spot either way. He can... If he loses... Snoke, he doesn't have to lose any cards, but then he would lose, uh, he can move him in front of him to block this drain of two. He loses two force to keep him on the table, or he pays one to move him over to block this drain of two. And since the finalizer here, oh, it's only, it's on this system that your ships move from here for free. So either way, I think he's still unable to block both drains because he only has one force left. So, but by keeping Snoke, he could possibly put one more damage on his opponent next turn, or two more in this case. Um, so he moves the finalizer to Jakku. He's got a drain of two, a drain of two, and a drain of two, and that would be pretty much game. And he can just peel a bunch of cards from hand. But now you don't have the force left. You only have one force left, so either move the finalizer or you move Snoke over to block, but because if you, if he stays here and doesn't move and doesn't move Luke back into the cantina, he would just drain two and two. So, yeah, he's just going to try and just block some damage and make sure he doesn't give Joe an extra turn on top of it because there may be a way where Joe could squeeze out. Maybe he gets down to like one card left or something. He 
He's just going to try and just do as much damage as he can. Get these drains in. And Silverclan clutching the two cards in his hand, really wanting to make sure that the game ends next turn. He's finally going to lose to Gick now, not realizing, not needing that. Joe's going to shuttle Lando down. Or I'm sorry, a wedge down first. Um, see if he moves the Tantiv away. He does. He moves it back to Tatooine to block that drain there. Luke moves in front of P59 to block that drain. So he's got. He doesn't have Menace Fade set up, though. So he's still taking two, two. Uh, sure, it moves over. Okay. So he'll take four damage. Snoke can battle, causing one more, which would be five. Uh, but he can also deploy this trooper and do damage number six. So he should get out of this with a win by ten. Drain two, drain two. He's got no cards in hand and two cards left down. You just deploy the trooper. Anywhere. That would be the one place I wouldn't have expected. Uh, the lateral damage in hand, too, of course, should also end the game with damage and forfeit. Uh, but he didn't even need to do that. If he had lost the lateral damage from hand, he still could have won the game. Just dropped the First Order Trooper, battle with Snoke, cause a force loss, kill Chirrut, and then battle with the... I guess you might have to peel a couple cards in the battle with Chirrut, though, possibly depending on what your destiny draw was. <laughs> and then this battle over here ends the game. Or it should end the game. Maybe not. He's going to get more drains in, it looks like, after all. It's a crazy little sequence of events here in this last turn. All right, so Phasma gets to retrieve a trooper for battling, for winning the battle at a related location. Doesn't have to lose. He's got to lose Grievous because he drew the five. He's got his opponent outpowered, so Bale goes. But the uh, Tantive gets to stay, so now he's got to move people. P-59 moves over there. He's got to shuttle people down to block trains on the ground. Yeah, this played out a little, a little differently than I expected it to. Because he just overactivated a little bit and forgot about Chirrut's other text. Battle just initiate it, peek at the top card of any reserve deck, return it, or place it on top of owner's force pile. So he only had one card left in his reserve deck, so Chirrut looked at it and then moved it to his force pile, so he had no destiny draws. He didn't necessarily need all this force, so he could have left another card or two. Yep, so he will shuttle everybody down, block as many drains as he can. He'll get a drain of one in. Ray can battle Hux, but doesn't really get him anywhere because it's still four to four. Wedge can battle PV and cause uh, one more card loss, I guess, three to two. Would have been the best case scenario. But then uh, he might possibly give his opponent a way to retrieve some cards of his own. So he's just going to draw up here, uh, end the game, and take the loss by 10. So Silver Glen picks up the win by 10. As promised, we'll look at another card from our 
league kits. So far we've shown off Insidious Prisoner and the Invisible Hand. And keeping with uh, our A Stunning Move theme, uh, here is the, the bridge as a foil. So now you've got three foil cards for your new A Stunning Move decks. Alright, so Silver Glen with a 10 card lead going into game number two. Which will be Old Allies against Map. And Old Allies has selected Rose as their resistance agent. Sorry, just checking the old Twitch chat there for a second. Yeah, definitely a little bit of a messy finish that last turn, but uh, still a win by 10. So Joe's going to go kind of similar to the same way we saw in game one. Mataka to the ground, pull Jakku. Uh, he gets one of the sights out. He's also playing alert. So it looks like this is probably going to be a uh, fairly similar, maybe two or three card different. Which, again, them being teammates, you'd expect that they would have similar builds uh, on things. Joe's going to go Poe and Calrissian and a flight suit to the Falcon. Uh, the Rebel flight suit, certainly a good defensive card here. Uh, once per game, a character is piloting in battle. May cancel a non-immune defense interrupt. It's very good for things like uh, Imperial Command when they try and limit you, which is, you know, with Poe adding a second destiny here, uh, should they try and limit you, you could go ahead and cancel that once per game. It also gives an extra two power, so that's going to make the Falcon uh, power 11 here. Joe does activate 13, so he certainly has some options here. He's going to go look for the site, and the site is in there. And then we look and we see Hux and PV are both in there as well. So if you wanted to drop one of them, uh, we see he's got the lateral damage in his hand. And if you assume that the deck is similar to Silver Glens, I don't see an Overwhelmed. So it could be in his Force Pile. And he might want to try and get a use pile search to go get it. There's the finalizer and Hux. That'll cost him eight. That's half his force. And he will get a use pile search. It is not in there. Kylo is, though. So if it's in the bottom eight, he could take Kylo and spend five and drop him as well. Put him here and possibly move Mata or shuttle Mataka up or something. Just put Kylo to the ground and get him his lightsaber. And he is going to spend the five on Kylo. And now we look at it. 
and now the Overwhelmed is there. So I think we're about to see a replay of what happened last game, except it's going to be a little bit more uh, painful here for the old Allies player. Justin, feel free to look away. Cover your eyes. Don't look at the light. So we get a lateral damage on the Falcon, making it power zero. Here comes the Overwhelmed. Now, unlike uh, the Tantive and everything last game that just goes used, this particular Falcon has a text on it that says, may not be placed in reserve deck. If it's about to leave table, it goes out of play. So the pilots on it would go used. But the Falcon will not. And he had a force available and opts not to grab it. That's going to flip the objective. We're going to send the Falcon out of play. Lateral damage will then be canceled, and the Overwhelmed will go lost, which will then get stacked using the, the map objective. We'll drop Decree just in case he needs it uh, to protect Mataka. I think he's just going to shuttle him up from there. He's going to drop a trooper with Kylo just to give him the minus. Hux is going to pull a trooper. He's going to get Phasma. Still in the move phase here. Okay, good. He's going to shuttle up. I'm like, don't just leave him there. Especially when you don't have a gick in your hand. But I will shuttle up Mataka. Draw a card, save a force. So I guess turnabout is fair play. Justin talked about karma in the last game. He did it and got hit right back with it. And just like the same way, his opponent stacked the overwhelmed. And we'll see if a situation arises where it gets played a second time. He's going to leadership to take an admiral, which is going to get grabbed. He's going to let him take the guy. Not too concerned about that. So there's a Tanev. There's a Radis. And there's a Poe. Should we went use to get Poe back? Time to put in the toolkit. Yeah, Han's toolkit does protect against that. Um, all right, so he moves the Tantive with Radis and Poe over to Starkiller base. I have a sneaking suspicion after he drains here, we're going to see a no escape pick up the lateral damage, and Kylo Ren's command shuttle is going to go pull off the overwhelmed because it doesn't require a capital or anything. It just says target a system where your total power is more than double your opponents. So he's just going to drop the shuttle, lateral damage, make this power zero, overwhelmed, and send the whole thing used, and then just move the shuttle back to Jakku. Clash, uh, yeah, not a lot of old allies decks run Clash because they don't typically run the EPP guys with lightsabers. Against the mains deck, yeah, you don't do something like that. Um, old allies, Clash isn't really a card you see very often, so. Yeah, and again, playing against a teammate, as uh, as Justin mentions in the chat here, uh, you guys kind of know each other's deck lists. You worked on them together for Worlds and uh, for the OCS playoffs and stuff like that, so. Uh, unless you were going to try and really be sneaky and make some changes specifically to throw your opponent off or catch him off guard with something like that. It's, uh, it's a low-risk play. So, just, uh, so uh, Joe's got good board control here now. He's doing drains of two and three. Certainly some aggressive plays. 
Uh, and he's just going to draw a big hand here and just see what he can do to pile on some extra damage. He's got plenty of ground characters now. He picks up Chirinu to add to the Force Drain in space. And Silverglund's going to send Lor Santeca back to go get Chewy. It was the no escape that hurt the most. Of course, the lateral damage. Yeah. Did you ever consider grabbing Overwhelmed? Did it even cross your mind, Justin? After he, when you, because you had an opportunity when you played it the first time and you had a force left. I mean, there's so many other interrupts you'd rather grab, but was it even like, uh, were you thinking about it now? Like, damn, I wish I had grabbed that. <laughs> All right, so we get a solo and a chewy, and then we get a ray next door. Doesn't really have any force left to really battle with, so he's gonna have to move ray over and consolidate that. And he'll pull the sentry shield to make those first order troopers more expensive, but things are about to get really messy here because we've got Kylo with the saber, we've got a P-59 in hand, and we've got a Dr. E combo as well. And he would need a number of useful interrupts to get himself out of this situation. He's going to get a sniper attack as well. I think he just go after Solo here, because he's kind of the linchpin, getting the de the cards out of the Lost Pile and adding the extra Destiny. I think the only thing he's missing is the other FN guy to cancel Chewie's text, so Chewie can't shoot, but, uh, you know, with Dr. E, you don't really need that. I guess you could go the other way. You cancel Chewie's text, kill Ray, and then just leave Chewie there and beat the crap out of him. There goes Solo, just like in the movies. He never saw it coming. His son snipered him right off the planet. They both lose the Force. Yeah. Yeah, once Map starts leaning on you, Map's really good at just continuing to apply the pressure. And things really just start snowballing from there. And not a lot of decks can dig themselves out of a hole against it. It might be a little easier post errata Because at least, you know, they dig in. They clear a bunch of your guys. And then they hide behind strategic to cancel your biggest drain. Pressing their advantage. Uh, without strategic to cancel that drain. There might be an opportunity for you to just run away from them. And catch up. But... Uh, yeah, here comes the whole big party. We've got Phasma. We've got used pile searches. Grab Snoke or whatever here. Yeah. Uh, what's that Jedi mind trick? The card that makes him pay two to uh, <laughs> pay two or cancel the battle. It's about the only thing that's going to help here. And again, that's not a card you usually see in uh, in this type of, type of deck. So we got twenty six to ten. P-59 is going to pick off Chewie, or attempt to. It would be pretty rare for him to miss, but... Hey, he draws a Chimera. So, that does not... Oh, it does just hit because the troopers are there. Never mind. Haha. -ha. Uh, yeah, because the troopers make him defense value minus three. So he's a just defense value minus one, negative one, which gets reset to zero. So anything hits him there. Uh... He's operated on, he's out of the picture, and he's got two force loss. And there goes the female defensive interrupt. Now Ray is going to get swung at, and she's probably going to be hit and forfeit zero. Those are two threes. That will hit Ray. I think he'll decline to operate on her.
So Justin's going to need the Hujix here, but even still, his opponent is miles ahead of him at this point. And he only won the first game by 10. Yeah, he opts not to uh, lose force to draw here. He loses two for losing the battle, cutting him down to 25 cards left in life force. Phasma doesn't have anybody to retrieve, I don't think. There's the Hujix, but... I mean, you got six cards in hand. Your opponent's got drains of two and three pretty well in, entrenched here. It's not a whole lot you can really do this turn. You've got six cards in hand. You're going to activate, draw, eat five more damage, and then do what? Where do you go from there? So I think this game's going to be wrapping up here pretty soon. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, he's sitting on Ellis. So uh, unless... Now, if he found quite a mercenary... <laughs> but unfortunately, how do you leave two force? You leave two force to do it, and then your opponent's like, yeah, never mind, we'll just walk over. Um, he does flip. So he does find a way to flip here. He flips. He lands. Rose gets out. She was the agent, so she'll stay outside. No force available to retrieve a firepower. Activate. He can drain for well, two in space and one because it'll get reduced by the objective. That's something else that'll no longer uh, be able to happen after the errata. Can't protect your own locations or your Jakku locations. Yeah, Rops says your own locations. Old Ally says Jakku locations. So even against map, when they're draining at their own sites, um, you won't have that ability. So we got Snoke here. He doesn't have any force available. There's the Ellis. You can move half these guys over, beat up Ray again, move half these guys over and clear this other site, take them all and clear this site. Yeah, he's going to take everybody, it looks like. And he's got enough force left to battle in both spots. Yeah, he's just going to go beat the crap out of Ray. He's already burned one Hujix. They don't usually play two. And yeah, so everyone's going to go ahead and concede there. Uh, so that's going to put Team USA tying things up. Two wins apiece. So we've got two matches for Team USA, two matches for Team Europe. And the two remaining matchups uh, left to play. We've got Brian Mischke and Tom Damon. And we've got Greg Shaw and Kieran Fergit. We have the first game of the Greg Shaw-Kieran matchup.